So, G of four, we measure from clearance of the any length, right? Another way to measure the G of four, no? That's another way to measure the G of four. Okay, clearance of the Latin, this is the trinity. Okay, another way to measure the G of four. So we can use starting forces, okay? We can use the starting forces, that's what? What's the point of that one? Option factor. Then you have what? Hydrostatic pressure. Minus hydrostatic pressure. And the capillary is this one. This is bonus. Minus. And contact pressure. Where is that one? Contact pressure, right? Capillary is. Moments, right? This is how to measure the other So we can measure it this way. So this is like this capital is all these capsules here. That's the hydrostatic pressure of the capital is. Hydrostatic compression of moments should be less than the hydrostatic pressure in the given line to keep the filtration. more than a moment's capsule gives the filtration. We need to have what? Less of oncotic pressure here than oncotic pressure in the capillaries. Oncotic pressure is equal to what? Zero almost. This is almost zero. Why? Because we don't have proteins in the moment's capsule. We don't have proteins that cannot be filtered with big molecules. So the oncotic pressure or osmotic pressure is almost zero. Inhibiting prostaglandin. Right? Medication here, like what, which medication will inhibit prostaglandin? Cancer. Okay. Which one here? Construct the infant angiotensin 2. So, which one inhibits angiotensin 2? Not ACE inhibitors. This one, when it goes down here, the ether, what we call it? Pericapillary. Pericapillary tubules or pericubular capillaries. Okay? Pericubular capillaries. Pericubular capillaries. The one runs closer or parallel to the tubules. And contact pressure here will be what? Increased. Why the oncotic pressure will be increased in this case? Because you are filtering here and you are keeping what? Protein. You are building up the protein along the course of the peritubular capillaries. So more protein here, more oncotic pressure. More oncotic pressure here than here, that's because of what? Reabsorption. We have reabsorption because we have more oncotic pressure in the peritubular capillaries. Why we have more? We've got the pressure here because we're filling the fluid and we're keeping more plasma proteins. Now back to the effect of the answer. This one inhibits prostaglandin, right? So we we'll constrict the atom. So we have less of the blood supply or blood flow to the glomerular. Less of blood flow to the glomerular, less filtration. 
In the long run, N set is not there, right? It can cause Riemann free. That's why the N sets can be a cause of Riemann problems. And there's a no problem. It's one mechanism, okay? And first of all, the AC inhibitors, we said it. We said this will inhibit angiotensin 2, so it will dilate the effant. Once you dilate the effant, you're going to facilitate the movement of the blood, right? Away from the villanol line. This will reduce filtration. Okay, this is, has two effects. One is good, and huh? the good effect. Who's the good effect? And the diabetes mellitus, okay? The diabetic, diabetic patient, okay? The first sign of nephropathy in the diabetic patient hyperinfiltration. The first is hyperinfiltration. Fully urea, okay? Hyperinfiltration of fully urea puts what? Load, pressure in what? In the glomerula, in the kidney. So by giving the AC inhibitors to the diabetic patient, when? When are you going to give this one? You see microalbuminuria. Microalbuminuria is the indication to start the AC inhibitors in the diabetic patient. Even if they don't have uh, hypertension, still you give that one. Once you see what? The albumin, microalbuminuria in there. Okay, but the first problem with the kidney here is the hyperinfiltration. Okay, so when you give the AC inhibitors here, you're going to delete what? The ether, right? So you're going to reduce what? The pressure, the hydrostatic pressure in the glomeruli. Once you reduce that one, you will be, will have what? Less filtration, less of polyuria, less load against the kidney system. So that's why it's good. It's there when it comes to what? Bilateral renal artery stenosis. Bilateral renal artery stenosis, that's bad. Why? Because by dilating this one, you're reducing the filtration. And already they have what? Less of blood supply through the abdomen. Right? So that's why it's contraindicated if it is severe bilateral renal artery stenosis. Then you have examples in the first state about the changes in the filtration fraction, right? With different like uh, scenarios. You have the table there, right? You see the table? 